Welcome everybody to the Educator Spotlight Series. Uh, I have with me today, Debbie Hayes. How are you doing, Debbie? I'm great. You? Great. I'm doing good. I'm doing better, <laughs> better now. And uh, Debbie is an elementary teacher at, uh, at uh, Kent Woods. Um, in Kentwood District, she's a PEAKS teacher, which is their gifted and talented program. And her email address is up on the screen. And today's topic is emphasizing and measuring employability skills in the elementary classroom. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, well, you asked me to tell a little bit about, I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen. You asked me to tell a little bit. Uh, I'm feeling nervous. I'm trying to figure out okay. how to share my and, screen. In the, so. bottom, in the bottom, it says uh, sh uh, share screen. Do you see like an arrow pointing up? Yes. Can you see my screen yet? Not yet. Okay. Still see you. I'm trying to get back to you. I'm working You're on okay. it. That's what happened when I had multiple screens going too. Okay. I think I got it now. Still see. Yeah. There we go. For your patience. You're awesome. Okay. So you asked me to tell a little bit about. Um, what we did in the classroom, and I'm, I wanted to know if you wanted to talk about the pilot program before um, I shared, or if you wanted me to try, try my hand at that. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we've worked um, in Kentwood, we've worked closely with Eric on some design thinking um, work, and he chatted with me about some work that he was doing in career readiness, and he talked about how um, he was interviewing employers around the area and trying to figure out what do you need from your employees and then he was thinking you know sometimes maybe we start too late we started the high school um, area and maybe we need to work back farther so he gathered a group of teachers across grade levels who would be willing to participate in a little pilot program to introduce some employability skills to students and um, to try to develop those skills starting really early on so with the hopes that they would be um, more solid by the time they were ready for a, a career. And so I think we had a kindergarten teacher and a third grade teacher and a fourth grade teacher and some middle school people. Am I right about that, Eric? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I ended up getting some secondary, but uh, I think it was this time it was, it was mostly all elementary. Yeah. So it was exciting to um, try that. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about um, how that was built in our classroom and um, so that you could ponder whether that would be appropriate for your kids. So we started with a big kind of a burning question, a guiding question for kids. And it was, what skills do I need to be successful at home, school, work, and play? I started by I, in the beginning, I was talking about the term employability skills, which was a little bit big for little kids. So we kind of paired it back to talk about it in this vein because we work in all of those situations in all of those settings. Um, Eric had told us a little bit about how there are some hard skills and some soft skills in the employability skills arena. So I had to get kids to kind of think about, um, I started out by asking them, what skills do you need to be a chef or a kid doing chores at home or a student or a teacher and so on and so forth. And some of their skills were like, well, like if I want to be a member of a sports team, I might need to be tall. <laughs> and so we were talking about the difference between skills that could be usable for all careers, which would be soft skills and hard skills, maybe that would be specific for that particular, um, I don't know, that particular career. I hope that I have defined that correctly. Um, so we had to define what a skill was, something you could practice and grow, and we had to weed out those non-skills. And then we just collected some ideas that kids already had about what, um, what it would take to be a good worker. And they came up with some really good ideas. I saw that a lot of the things that they shared were reflective of what their teachers had told them, and some things were reflective of what their parents had told them. So you could see they'd already been having conversations about being good workers. Um, and then Eric asked us to do, because it was a pilot program, he asked us to do a pre-assessment and a post-assessment so we could talk about um, whether we saw growth in those specific skills that we were teaching. So because um, some of those skills seemed to be a little bit beyond third grade, I thought it would be purposeful to narrow them down. And we, I chose a set of six 
um, or it shows six different skills that complemented some of the work that we were already doing in the classroom. We had begun our year with genius hour and talking, well, we had that all the way through the year, but we talked at the beginning of the year about traits of a creative thinker. And so I tried to look for some of these um, career readiness skills that would kind of complement that work. And then of course we, for our PBS traits, we have power, um, that's our little acronym and it's positive on target, willing, engaged and respectful. And so a lot of these traits kind of partnered up with those. So we ended up with six traits, decisiveness, adaptability, responsibility, good choices, teamwork and reasoning. And I had to really do some hard work with the help of some of the resources that were given to us through Eric to think a little bit about how to break those big ideas down for kids. And so I kind of had some little bullet points to help guide me and to help guide students. And later I'll point to a particular um, kind of a graphic that helped kids as well. Um, so once we identified or I identified the focus skills that we'd be working on, we did do that preset or that pretest. Um, and I had to think about what my weekly instruction would look like because I did devote some time every day to, or maybe, maybe three times a week toward career readiness with explicit instruction. So I had to kind of give up a little bit of something so that I could put it in its place. Um, and then after the fact, it just wove itself into everything that we did. Um, but I did have to have a period of explicit instruction. Um, and then I had, um, as a part of that weekly instruction, we had some goal setting and some self-reflection. And then at the end, I wanted to do some sort of an evaluation to kind of figure out um, what kids learned and how they saw themselves differently after all of that instruction. So we had a little choice board where they get to got to select a project to reflect what they learned, and then a, that post test that matched the pre test. Um, so the weekly instruction looked like this: we started with an I can statement, which was like a working definition for us to go back to. I tried to make it um, very relatable. So I tried to employ an activity or a game and some kind of in experiential, experiential understanding to be like an anchor for us um, so that we could um, go back to that regular and say, and say, remember when we played that game and we were talking about this, that was the skill that we were working on. Let's try to employ that skill today when we do this particular activity of this work. Um, and how do you employ that skill as well at home? And then we had some really in-depth instruction that would um, try to explain more specifically what that skill was. So we had experiential instruction and then we had some, just some language development. And we tried to tie that to student experiences in the classroom and at home to try to make that um, career focused skill really come to life. And then at the end of the week, kids had to rate themselves. So they had to, um, tell how, what they, how they thought they were doing on a scale of one to four with, I think four being high, um, to show that whether or not they thought they, they thought they were good at that skill yet or not. And it, the purpose was to give, just to get, make them more self-aware and aware of others and just to practice the art of self-reflection and then to do a little goal setting so they could grow. Um, this is kind of, this is a little bit of what, the, about what those um, that self-reflection look like. A friend in the pilot shared with us some documents that were really helpful to me. And she, um, on the right, you'll see a place where they had to set two goals. And I, we taught six different skills, but I really only asked them to narrow in on two goals that they could work on because I thought that that was more manageable. Um, they had, on the left-hand side, you can see there's a little graphic that helped them think about the different components of that particular skill. And this one is adaptability. Um, and then the, the numbers are not related to the rubric, the scoring guide, which is a little confusing to kids. Um, it's just like four different components of that skill. And then they had to rate themselves on a scale of one to four and then explain their rating. And we, I collected that data so that I could um, address certain needs and so that I could just see how their growth um, was coming about. 
And this is just an example of, I just took a little snippet of the results that I, or the data that I gathered. So you can see like a list of kids making, setting their goals. Um, I can make choices more quickly. This is about making choices, not adaptability, I guess. No, it is about adaptability. Um, I can make choices more quickly. I can complete my cast tasks on time. Um, I can make sure that I'm not making choices too quickly if I need to give them more thought. Um, and then in the self-reflection department, the kids just kind of on this bottom portion of the, on the right-hand side of the screen where they had to explain their rating, that's kind of where I took that data to just collect what their rating was and why they felt the way they thought about how they did with that particular skill. Um, there was an occasion where the lights, the electricity went out and it was darkish and we had to do science in the dark. And so we all got to practice adaptability that week. And that happened to be the skill that we were working on. So it's pretty timely. Um, so there were, a lot of, there were a lot of reflections about that. Um, there were some student takeaways. I, I asked kids um, to kind of tell what they learned at the end. And I had some kids point out some really poignant things. Um, for example, Lola said that she realizes that everybody has a job to do on a team and she was kind of taking over and doing all of the jobs. And that allowed her the time and the space, that instruction allowed her the time and the space to rethink things a little bit and to start to be aware of honoring the ideas of others as much as she honors her own ideas. Um, Javen learned that he has some strengths and he has some things to work on. And he was a boy that seemed to always feel like he was getting in trouble um, or maybe that's not the right language, but having, having to be corrected. Um, so it, I think it felt good for him to learn that he had some strengths, but that there, was, that there were some things that he actually needed to address. Um, and he should pay closer attention to those than the things that he is naturally really good at. Um, Miss Hannah learned that she's really tough on herself, that she can be too much of a perfectionist and hold herself maybe to too high a standard. Um, but she also learned that she's really introspective. And um, Miss Evie learned that she is too passive and she should um, exercise her voice and in order to be a really good team member. So those are just four ideas. Um, so I was happy to see that students came away with something um, that they could use and take with them um, at home and at school and at work and on their teams and so on and so forth. I also had some takeaways. I realized the importance, well, I probably already knew this, but um, it was uh, validated that the that common language is really important because we now had some things that we could some language we could use to continue conversation centered around those specific skills and how they show up at in the classroom. Um, and I learned, I'm on the top right corner, I learned that it's really easy to help students set goals. Um, but for me personally, it's really difficult to help them learn how to measure their growth um, over a period of time. So that's a place where I would want to continue to work. Um, because we didn't do a very good job of that. We set them and then we didn't really come back to them very well or very often. Um, and then at the bottom left, kids didn't show in Crete. This is an interesting finding. I was really hopeful that moving from pre-test to post-test, I would see my scores really improve and they, they didn't very often improve. So my big thinking was that maybe they just didn't understand those skills very well. Like when I said, um, we're gonna practice decisiveness. And even though they could read a little blurb about the definition of it, they didn't really have much experience thinking about decisiveness. So when they rated themselves, it was kind of a stab in the dark. Um, but once they learned more about what it meant and they could practice that often in the classroom and hear that language often and see examples of decisiveness in their work, um, then they really could um, authentically and honestly rate themselves at the end. And so we might not see much change. So I don't feel bad about it. Um, and, and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. And then finally, um, I 
didn't did not do as well a good a job as my cohorts in the pilot program of locating um, mentors in 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 work for in the workforce to come in and talk about um, how they like to think about their let me try that again I didn't use a great I didn't do a great job of selecting people who could come in and talk about how they care about those focus um, career readiness skills that we picked out like adaptability how do how do I expect people to be adaptable in my workplace how do I expect people to be decisive in my workplace we did take um, we had a week long visit to the zoo and Eric and his team have collected a bunch of videos of people in the workplace who talk about those career readiness skills. And so we did utilize the video about from the one at the zoo and recognize some of our friends there. And they talked about how they use um, those focus skills that we worked on. So, but I would do a better job of that this next time around, um, especially now that there aren't any restrictions about having people in. So that's kind of how I managed it. Yeah. Great. Was that was that the last slide there, Debbie? That's it. Okay. No, that's you can go ahead and stop sharing your screen so we can see more okay. of your face. Yeah, okay. That's great. No, that's awesome. And um, so and I see there's um we got 17 people here, and um I see Erin Bastic is one of our guests. She actually um works at Byron Center uh high school and she was doing that pilot for me this fall. So just so, the, so you know, Debbie, there's a little bit of a connection and she was doing it. And I was actually looking over your data today, Erin. But um so if you go ahead and you're still sharing your screen. So I'm trying, I can help. I'm trying it's okay. to not it. It's okay. Hold on. This will stop. So I'm, I had to do that. There you go. Stop Share. Here. here it is. Thanks. There we go. Are we back? And, and stop sharing. There we go. All right. Good. Um, so one of the things that um, that I just found, and I actually could show my slides here. I'm going to share quickly, quickly, because I actually um, collected data as we were talking about that, I collected data on this from, from Debbie, another elementary school teacher, and actually a young fives teacher. And my goal was, I originally thought I was gonna get a bunch of high school people to do this and collect a lot of data. And one of the things I found that I got a lot of rich data, I feel like from elementary teachers, um, maybe it's because you have more time to kind of dive into this, um, but I'll follow up in just a second. I do have some questions for you, Debbie. And if anybody out there has questions, please, please share that as well. But I wanna share right now, hold on, I gotta make sure I get the right screen. So screen two, um, are you able to see my my screen here? Uh, yes. Okay, hopefully I'm showing the right one. Do we see this right here where it says have, uh, your Debbie's uh, Hayes' growth data? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm gonna throw that quickly here in presentation mode. Oh, shoot. Wrong one. Sorry, I'm scaling quickly here. All right. So this is actually all the data. So Debbie really just went above and beyond. Like she said, she did six of them. I think we ended up recording on four of them. Um, I only asked just for, you know, I asked for two to four and she even went, she did six of them. Um, but the cool thing is back to her data stuff, I was able to kind of take all her stuff and put it into a chart here. And you can see that like um, under decisiveness, only 61, 61% of students said no growth. And under um, uh, adaptability, um uh 52 percent said no growth um but there was 39 percent growth in adaptability for a little bit but nine percent regression and we can see even regression on all of these um and i was like oh man what are we supposed to do that but debbie pointed this out in her data and another teacher an elementary teacher pointed this out in her data in fact i think all of them said this in some way shape or form what i feel like is when we had regression it was because Maybe my students, like, I think you kind of mentioned this a little bit ago, Debbie, maybe they didn't really understand that skill from the beginning very well, but now they're actually marking themselves lower because they understand it better, right? Like, mm -hmm. meaning like, oh, I, I, I overestimated my value and now I understand it better. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not as good at this as I thought I was. So I take that as kind of a win in looking yeah. at some of that data. Um, but we could see um, progression, um, growth, and but also regression in several of the skills and kids were just kind of, um, being maybe a little hard on themselves. But I also wanted to share, share this too with Debbie's uh, students. The general theme was that students definitely learned about themselves and noticed growth in the skills being assessed. And she had them do some write-ups and I had to share this because it was funny because kids did the write-ups. And one of the students said, I somewhat feel sweaty 
when I'm making tough decisions on an assignment. <laughs> so I mean, like, that was like, I want to have to make this being decisiveness. It makes him feel smart. I'm like, yes, buddy, I feel the same way when sometimes I have to make hard decisions. But um, she even gave a, a great little story, like other kids wrote, wrote up a little story and they gave uh, a little example of what that would look like. So I just thought that um, there were some really good takeaways um, on Debbie's stuff, but, um, but actually all of the data that we gathered. So I have a couple of questions and I do see, um, I see here, Laura said, Laura Summerfield says, great ideas, would love those slides, but be happy to share mine. And Debbie, if you want to share with me, I can make sure we put these out to everybody as well. Yeah, I actually have a, um, a slide deck that's got all of my instruction, my, my direct instruction and my little activities. So I'm happy to share that as well. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and Debbie is the type. She's like, she's in, she's all in, and she went above and beyond and she made lessons and all that stuff. So, um, and Christy Kinsler says she thinks it's awesome. Um, Aaron said, I think it's awesome that you're starting with such young kiddos, Debbie. I, I can imagine how confident they will be and how ready for the workforce upon graduation. I totally agree. And what I am envisioning, how I see this is, we need to be more implicit. So one of the reasons why I asked for this pilot is a lot of teachers are doing some form or shape of skills, but oftentimes as a parent, I can use this example as a parent, but I think teachers sometimes do this too. Yeah, I teach employability skills. I tell my kids they need to be responsible all the time, but that's not teaching because even to your point, you mentioned sometimes I was explaining these skills that might've been a little bit above their head, right? So we had to kind of go back and kind of break that down a little bit further. I do have some questions and then I want to make sure I open it up to questions for anybody else. But um, you kind of alluded to this early. It sounded like at the beginning, you kind of had to set it up a little bit. But once you started going, do you feel like it was really hard to integrate these skills into the curriculum that you were already doing? Or would you say like, I had to make some specific time just for this and I had to completely change the way I was doing my lessons? Or were you able to embed it in some way? Um, well, as I said, you know, you talked about that direct instruction time that was really necessary for those six specific skills, but we talked about that all day long. It just kept coming up and up over and over and over again, whatever skill that we were working on that week and any skills that we'd already learned, it was just, um, kids were very mindful of kind of that self-development kind of thing. Um, and we had do so much work with collaborative learning and um, that things like being adaptable and uh, making decisions together and using teamwork, those, all of those things were really important and being responsible, making sure you get your part of the job done and holding yourself accountable for that, that would come up all day long. Okay, so and it wasn't that something like I have to set aside the time to do it, it just came up throughout your, your regular instruction then. After I directly taught, yes. After you specifically taught. <laughs> or in addition okay. to the direct. Right. Um, what would you say some walking away from that? What were some of the lessons learned from you, from your standpoint? Like, okay, oh, wow. And you already shared a couple of those, like, oh, maybe um, it wasn't as clear at the beginning or we had some guests, but oh man, I kind of missed the opportunity to have them talk about it. But what were some of the things like, that was really good. I'm glad I did that type of takeaways. Um. Well, I'm really glad that third graders can be that self-reflective. Um, you know, they they like to, they come in a little bitty as second graders, they come in, they wanna play most of the time and they grow a ton over the course of the year, but to be self-reflective requires a lot of self-discipline. I have to sit down and think about who I am and what, what choices I've made and what's working and what's not working. And you also have to think about other people. So. I mean, I, that's very career oriented, right? I've got to think right. about what, how my choices affect me and how they affect right. my work and how they affect others. So I, I was well, proud I'm going to ask you this question and, um, because I've talked about this very question with another teacher. Do you feel that, and this is not knocking, but in, in just looking at maybe at your own teaching in the, in the past, but other teachers just teaching in general, do you think that is done as explicitly as maybe then when you did this before you were doing it, but maybe as explicitly. And do you think that the students walked away with some, some variable takeaways to see how what they're learning in the classroom applies to the quote unquote real world? I had never, um, I don't think I'd ever taught it that explicitly. And it had been like, a, well, it's evidenced by the fact that you 
you say a word and they act like they know what it means, but they don't really know what it means. And then when you teach it, they fully understand it. So we use throw words around all the time, but if we don't have any activities or any any um, experiences that connect to those terms, then they don't they don't really mean that much to the kids. So it was much more meaningful, or I feel like I really affected change in the hearts of kids and the minds of kids in a way that I hadn't before in my instruction. Okay. And then cool. you asked me a second part of that question. What was it? Um, something about careers or something. Oh, yeah. Well, just in, in the connections with employers and stuff like that. And you mentioned that. But do you think that they saw a connection between what you're talking in the classroom and how that actually would impact their in work? The workforce? Yeah. Um, that's the part that I would like to the place where I'd like to grow, because I, I think I kept it at the work that you're doing in the classroom and the work that you do on your team and the work that you do at home, but I didn't do as great a job at linking it to the, to a career. Um, so that's a place where I can grow. Okay. Um, and I'm going to ask anybody in the chat, uh, if you can go ahead and throw in the chat, regardless of your role, I see some teachers on here for sure, but if you're a teacher, counselor, administrator, maybe you're not in classroom, where do you see value in tying these employability skills to the work that you're doing what when we're being a little more implicit about that how do you think that would benefit students and then helping them see a correlation between these skills because i think sometimes there's a disconnect between i'm te learning stuff in school but then people are like well we're going to use this in the real world and they don't see those connections well i think these when i talk to employers over and over and over and over again they keep asking for evidence of these skills so I guess in the chat, or if at any point you want to, you know, unmute yourself, you can feel free and share, like, how do you see how be more explicit um, with these skills um, as opposed to just implicit, but ex explicit with that will help them in preparation for the world work and tying what they're learning in the classroom to, um, to connecting that to, uh, to the world of work, learning what they're learning. So if you want to go ahead and put that in the chat, or if anybody wants to unmute themselves, or now's a great time if you have a question to go ahead and share a question with us. And I see Kathy says, I'm a business teacher. So this is a huge part of your curriculum. That's awesome. And my follow-up question to Kathy. So then you actually are very explicit with that. Do you talk about specific skills? Do you have a list that you make sure that you cover and kids are seeing? And then you're talking about like, this is how you're gonna use this in the, in the workforce. And that can go to anybody else. While, uh, while we're waiting for somebody to um, respond, um, let me ask you this. What, um, what did the, how did this impact like classroom management? I, I, I've seen you in action before. You, are, you already have classroom management down, but do you feel like it kind of blended well with classroom management? And because you're teaching these skills and these skills are supposed to help make your classroom run more efficiently as well. Did it, did it work alongside Debbie or was it just, you know, another thing? That's a really good question. I think it helped kids to manage themselves better um, and took a little bit of the responsibility off of me because I had the language to give them. For example, um, some of the silly things that happen in third grade are, I found a pencil on the floor. What do I, what do I do with it? Like, mm -hmm. and that interrupts the flow of everything. And so we would just say, well, you can make that decision. Um, which is a little silly, but um, it's just a very little example, but I could put it back in their court. So like you're having a problem with your team. What did you learn about teamwork that you could use to um, help solve this problem so that I wouldn't have to tell them you need to do this and you need to do this. They were managing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, That's great. Uh, but Kathy says I she thinks, she oh, go ahead, please jump in. Oh, that and you were going to, this is Lori Summerfield, yeah. you were going to yeah. address um, Kathy's point too, but I was just going to say to Deb, um, I'm a work-based learning teacher, so I go to employers and talk to employers, and your example about the finding the pencil, what do I do with it, it's, it's not silly, it seems so silly, but it is, I have high schoolers, I think that sometimes it's almost the same thing, you find a fork on the floor, there might be some kids that would be like, okay, what should I do with this? It sounds so silly, but it's that kind of stuff where they, they're afraid to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. At my level, they're afraid to make a mistake. So yeah. they stop thinking for themselves. 
And that's something that employers, when, when they do think for themselves, employers love that. They don't always Absolutely. need to be told what to do. The student can do, can, you know, do this on their own. They take initiative. That's really cool. Those two, and one other thing too, I guess kept thinking the self-reflection is so important. I mean, starting in third grade, that would be just be incredibly, uh, incredible. I keep thinking maybe this wasn't going to be for me. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, yes, I need to do, I need to help teachers do more of this to impact what I do at this level. So That's anyway, awesome. enough for me. No, <laughs> yeah. no, thanks, Laura. Thank you for sharing that. And, and uh, Aaron, I'd be remiss, I, Aaron just typed in here. She said, this was the focus of my semester uh, for career ready class in English 12. And, and, and if you uh, feel comfortable jumping on and, and sharing, um, would be happy to, uh, to hear from you. Um, what do you think, uh, Aaron, about the connection between seeing the started at the elementary um, like Debbie did so that by the time they get to high school, they have a little bit more of a foundation feeling instead of feeling like, man, I feel like I'm starting from scratch here. I feel like you can unmute yourself or you can just type in there. But what do you think about that in terms of like, is there value in making sure we're building progression at more implicitly uh, or I'm sorry, explicitly at an earlier level so that by the time they get to you there, they have a little bit more foundation on this? I think that'd be awesome. And Debbie, kudos to you for doing it with your kids so little. I think if we had a district-wide initiative running with all of our schools, by the time they get to me as seniors, they would be so ready to succeed. And, you know, I just keep going back to what my seniors said about we we don't necessarily feel all the way prepared for the real world and what can we do to address that? Well, you're starting so young that I know that your kids will definitely be ready mm -hmm. when they graduate. That's awesome. And I think too, if we start with our younger kiddos, at least learning and practicing, then when they're seniors, we're applying. And, you know, I, I did have some kids with job offers come out of going on job shadows and mock interviews that we did. I wrote that in the comments, but I think that mm -hmm. our focus could be more on the application part rather than having to learn. Not that they don't know them, but I feel like doing this younger would be just better for us. I'm in agreement and I'm working on it, Aaron. I'm going to try to get with your elementary schools to try to see how we can build a continuum of that for sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I just want to share a couple of things in, in the notes here. Um, Bethany says, great work, Debbie. Thank you for sharing your ideas with us. Two thoughts come to mind. as She listened. Uh, first, she, we need to connect with our elementary counselors. Absolutely. To better understand what career readiness skills are being taught or focused on. And second, I'd like to work to better bridge the work from the elementary to the middle school where you're a counselor. Absolutely, 100%. And then third, work with the seventh grade careers teacher to continue the focus and extend it to the guest speakers that you have. So that is exactly, and, oh, and then finally, wow, you, you had a lot to say. That's awesome, Bethany. She said, and then finally, figure out what I can do to help at this sixth grade level. And uh, what you just shared is where I ultimately, and then um, uh, Debbie, you can uh, address this, but ultimately what I feel the goal would be to how do we create this systematic plan from elementary to middle school to high school. So you're building upon these skills. In an ideal world, Debbie's working on three or four skills, you know, or maybe even two skills. And then at the next, uh, maybe third and fourth grade are working on two skills and fifth and sixth grade are working on two. And then you're building on those skills. Now, by the time we get to Erin, she should be having to work on all those skills. But those are all the skills that like, hey, I'm only introducing two or three new skills or four new skills, not having to teach them all from scratch because it's built um, on a systematic approach. That's awesome. Um, any thoughts or reflections to that uh, point, Debbie? I, I lost, I don't see your face there anymore. So I, I do, I do think often about whether or not my kids that have moved on to fourth grade and they all moved as a group because of the nature of our program. I wonder if they're utilizing um, the things that they've learned or if that ever comes up in their thoughts. Um, somebody asked, I think it was Christy, or no, it was Katie, um, has this work become more pervasive in the rest of our district? So in our district, I might be the only one in at least that I know of who's doing something specific with Eric. Um, doesn't mean that there aren't others doing something on their own that I don't know about. But. Right, right. Um, I, yeah, I, and technically Debbie helped me out. She's not one of the districts I service. So I would love to see that though, but I do see Christy, you mentioned she's an elementary counselor. She would love to hear more. And that's exactly what I want to hear, Christy. So we'll definitely make sure that we touch base. Um, so Greg says, Gregory says, I am uh, transitioning in counseling from the music classroom. I think there's a great opportunity to use the data here and get other districts on board. 
my current district doesn't even have an elementary counselor. So there is a big gap, which I totally agree. It's hard. I, we, we're very blessed when we have a district that have elementary counselors. But I do think this is work. Again, Debbie's an uh, elementary classroom teacher. So I do think this work can be done in the elementary classroom. We just have to have the people in place who are willing to say, yeah, I'm going to do that. It's nice when we have a counselor who can help coordinate. Um, but um, I knew, just recognize we're now out of time. I, I feel like the discussion is getting to be rich. And I hate to, to, to shut it down. But um, for those who are jumping on, like Katie said, is there more opportunity to do this? Um, for those in Kent County specifically, but I'll be honest, I'm willing to share some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, even if you're not in Kent County, I don't care. Um, I'm happy to share. We're kind of on, on an iteration two of this employability skills checklist. And the whole point of the checklist was just to kind of get the kids pre and then as they're working on it intentionally post to kind of like show if there's growth. But the real work, as Debbie shared, was actually when she was intentionally teaching about it. But I'm happy to share that. And we've been kind of in the process of developing some rubrics around that. So for those who were classroom teachers or counselors saying, okay, that's great that I have this definition, but now how do I dive a little bit deeper into that? We've been working on just kind of spending more time on how do we actually now use these rubrics to kind of dive in and break that skill into even smaller components. I'm happy to share that work with people, um, as well as this presentation that I have. And Debbie said she's willing to share hers to kind of help kind of start the conversation. And we will share that out to people who participated and signed up. But if you want, then you can go ahead and go ahead and pass on uh, or, or reach out to me if we don't get it or say, hey, I would like to do more of this. We're about out of time and I have to go ahead and quickly. So I saw people having to get off if you need to go back later and get this um, sketch form, that's fine for the, for the sketches. But let me just quickly share my screen one more time and we'll just wrap it up. And we're kind of past time here. So um, screen one, let me just share that quickly. Can you see my screen, Debbie? Yes. It's not in full screen mode, but that's okay. Um, we'll do it from right here. Actually, I can do a full screen mode. Um, oops, it's not, but that's okay. So um, upcoming events, we have Educator Spotlight, another one in February, another one in March, and another one in April. We have other guests already signed up and I'll have one in May. I'm just still trying to find a guest for. Um, we have other educator uh, PD opportunities. Uh, Navigating College Prep will be in March. That's an online. We have an educators in industry and in person on March 16th and a career readiness network um, on April. And then we also have career chats every Tuesday and Thursday. And you can check our PD Hub uh, for more information on those. And um, if you're interested in sharing some of the things that you're doing, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me um, at bit.ly forward slash spotlight guest. That's bit.ly forward slash spotlight guest. You can, um, if, you're, if you want to nominate somebody or you want to just share kind of some of the cool things you're doing, I would love to get your story. And then finally, oops, I just passed through that slide there. Uh, finally, if you are looking for um, a sketch for today's uh, session, you can go to bit.ly forward slash ESS hyphen sketch 2022 hyphen 23. And I will put that in the chat in just a second. But if you go to that bit.ly, and then you put in the six digit code 071442. That will be what you need in order to get the sketch for today's session. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these in just a second here and throw them into the chat. And um, with that, let me put that last slide up and then I can go ahead and stop um, the recording. But um, that's my email address and that's our website. I'm gonna stop sharing here and throw that stuff into the chat. Thank you, Debbie, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me.